Hi there, my name is Conor Berg and welcome to my channel. Uh, this is Sherlock Holmes The Silver Earring. It's an adventure point and click detective game. The developer and publisher is Frogwares. It came out in 2004, uh, single player for 2000 XP and Vista, and I'm on Windows 10, so it's doing so far so good. Uh, it's got mixed reviews and it's currently for £7 on Steam. At a reception in honour of his daughter, Melvin Bomsby, a rich tycoon, is about to make an important announcement concerning his future business affairs when all of a sudden a shot rings out. So, that's about as close as I can get to my desktop. It isn't, it's a lot higher than that, but that's all I've got. The frequency, you can put 60 hertz if you want. Um, But my monitor is 144, so I might as well record in 144. Um, color depth. I've left this all as it is. I don't know what the music's going to be like. Um, but we'll... We'll leave it as it is. I might just do it, like, record for a little bit and then have a quick test, see what it's like. Um, so, I haven't played much. I literally played about two seconds and I came out, so um, here we go. I haven't played this forever. Uh, right, let's go. Dear Mr. Holmes, please let me thank you one more time for your help in solving the case of the Turkish medallion. I'm sure that if the story could go public, the whole country would be as grateful as I am to you. As you may have surmised, I have a very urgent and confidential matter which requires your immediate assistance. You probably are aware that we are going to celebrate the birthday of a very important person, a member of the government. I can't mention their name in this letter for obvious reasons. The most famous and accomplished artists were selected and invited to perform. We are confident about their reputations. However, we have concerns about one performer in particular, a young Italian diva, Gallia, as there are certain rumours circulating about her. She has also provoked great acclaim in every European capital where she has appeared. We want to include her in this gala event, but have reservations about her reputation. She is, as fortune would have it, in London for another engagement. Sir Bromsby has invited her to perform during a reception to commemorate the return of his daughter to England. Due to reasons of politics and security, I can't attend the reception myself. Apart from yourself, I do not know anyone else I would be able to complete a mission of such importance. Together with this letter, I am sending two invitations, as I assumed your eminent colleague, Dr. Watson, would be accompanying you. A cab will arrive at 221B Baker Street at 8pm to take you to Sheringford Hall. Even though I know that the prospect of attending a private concert given by perhaps the best voice in Europe is very attractive for a music lover like yourself, please allow nothing to distract you from this important mission. Yours sincerely, Lord Cavendish Smith. How can we refuse a mission of such importance? Appearances to the contrary, I believe that the future of the nation can depend on our presence. Are you with me? If the future of the nation depends upon our presence, Holmes, then you can count on me. Please come right in. According to the request of Lord Cavendish Smith, during the dinner you'll be seated together. What do you know about Sir Bromsby Holmes? I have never met the man, and I do not follow what is written in the newspapers. However, I can tell you that Sir Bromsby is a man of approximately 50 years old, tall in stature. He is impulsive and may be prone to violent outbursts. He is of low birth, has few intimate friends, and does not like women. He must be a very aggressive businessman who would not hesitate to go beyond the law if it served his purposes. I'd like to add that today he is going to make a very important declaration concerning his business. And you, Watson, what have you heard about him? Well, I doubt that I would be able to give as detailed a description as you have just recited. Holmes, how can you say you do not know the man and give such an account? Watson, you know my methods. 
Look at the stage and the stand near the fireplace. It is obvious that they are prepared for a very tall man. I see the hostess and servants anxiously glancing in the direction of a door from which their employer must enter. Their expressions go beyond nerves and suggest fear. Only a violent and unpredictable man can cause such anguish. Now look at the guests. The men present at this party are mainly composed of military officers and rich entrepreneurs. All of them are in their fifties and are clearly business associates. So I decided that he is of their age. Furthermore, to have risen as rapidly as he has in this society, Sir Bromsby would have to be a very ruthless and intelligent businessman. The women present reveal much. Beautiful women and young girls, all neatly but rather cheaply dressed. Watson, look more carefully. There are no chaperones. No ladies would appear in public without suitable escort, I assure you. They stare at the youngest gentleman to find a convenient cavalier and cluck like chickens at the smallest idiocy. In short, a man who would invite only business associates and women of the lower classes to the birthday party of his only child must have few friends, rather poor taste in women, and little regard for his daughter. Another item of note, but not the least, observe that group of men speaking very quickly. It's a group of reporters armed with their notebooks gathered together now that the time of the address is coming. These are not the society reporters for the time sent to cover a gala birthday party. These are the regular reporters who would come only to gain news about the future of the Bromsby Empire. I will conclude by saying that no man except a lunatic would accept such an arrangement of tables and furniture. Look quickly, Watson. I hear applause. Sir Bromsby is coming. Ladies and gentlemen, let me thank you all for attending this special reception. In fact, this moment is a turning point for many people. Oh my God! Miss Lambert is not to allow anyone to leave and to send a man for the police immediately. Right, uh, I don't know if you can see, I'm just pausing it briefly, I'm going to change the volume of bloody, I'm going to be able to turn foul. But on the side here, I, I don't know if it's because I'm recording a certain thing, but you can see like little lines like zipping across. So I'm going to have a bit of a mess around here. Um. Turn the bloody sound down. It, it my eardrums nearly gave up. Uh, well, I'll have to probably keep doing this, and then I'll have to um, do this next time because it will flicker and then go back. So I can't change this until next time. So I'll have a look and see what my sounds look like. Okay. Let's click save. Uh, oh, there you go, you can see when I'm saving it. Where, where'd you? Sorry. Oh, hang on, right click, brought that up. Turn that volume down, shall we? The music's a bit annoying. Good job, that's out of it. The first handwriting is small and elegant, the second is hurried and forceful. Ah, now. I don't really need that for you, Mom. Let's drop it down there. I, my my eye my mm -hmm. get my teeth in. My lines there and there have disappeared now. So maybe it's just when it's the cutscenes. Uh, test tube. Okay. Tape measure and a magnifying glass. Excuse me, if I may. I am Sherlock Holmes. What do you wish to know? I must ask, who are you? 
I am the doctor from the village near the hall. Is he still breathing? He died instantly. Where is the bullet? It's still in the body. I must obtain police authorization to extract it. Is he still breathing? He died instantly. Okay. Thanks, Doctor. Never mind. Good day. My name is Sherlock Holmes. Would you mind if I asked several questions? If it helps you. Did you notice anything peculiar at the time of the shooting? I jumped up, and then I looked in the direction of the shot. There, I saw that little flirt, I mean Miss Bromsby. She seemed to be placing something in her handbag amid a cloud of smoke. Then she rushed to the stage. I must say, her sudden inheritance should be a fine present for her birthday. What precisely was your relationship with the victim? We were partners with the old scoundrel. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Sir Bromsby. He personally invited me. He gave me every assurance there would be plenty of fresh meat, if you take my meaning. Well, there was, but some of it was quite cold. <laughs> <laughs> were you an associate of the victim? Yes. He seems so much bigger when he's lying down rather than standing. Well, thank you very much. It is nothing, dear fellow. Turn that bloody music off. It's gonna drive me mental. Fine, let's just turn it off. Right. I see. No, because we'll need it for some bloody bits, won't we? Sorry about this. in the background so that's all that matters. Uh, what's this? Oh! Ah! Okay. Oh, that's my birthday. So you work with your daughter, then invite her to the ballroom. Don't forget the villager and the serpent. The villager and the serpent? Can't do that. Uh, what's this? Oh. Here now, watch your step. If you're a reporter, they'd better be a doctor nearby, because when I get done with you, you'll need one. Look here, my good man. I am a doctor. Dr. Watson, in fact. And believe me... Dr. Watson? Oh, hold on. Are you the Dr. Watson who writes about all those cases solved by Sherlock Holmes? Oh, I've read all your adventures. Who are you? My name is Lamb, Governor. I'm Sir Bromsby's coachman. Tell me, is he really that clever, this Sherlock Holmes? Look sharp, Lamb. Sherlock Holmes and I require your able assistance. No doubt. Stand firm at the private entrance and make sure no one enters or leaves until Holmes or myself returns. My pleasure, Dr. Watson. You tell Mr. Holmes that if anybody even steps on the lawn, they'll have to deal with lamb. And I can tell you, there are few bold enough to dare my fists. This door is blocked. That gate is the only way in or out of here, Dr. Watson. I've already secured the other door on orders of Miss Lambert to avoid them nosy reporters. If anyone tries to make a break through the garden, they won't get past me. I leave you, Lamb. Right, I'll stand guard. Okay, so he can play his two characters. Okay, that'll get back out of here. Fuck it. Ah, got 
loads of people to speak to. What's this? Oh, yeah, same things. Miss Lambert, I have been looking for you. What a tragedy. It's simply dreadful. Can't believe what they're saying about Miss Lavinia. Why did you open the gates so hastily? I was so upset. I know now it was imprudent. I should have waited until the authorities arrived, but some of those gentlemen were so loudly insistent that I yielded. Have you informed the police? The village constable attended the reception. He left on his bicycle, I assume to inform the proper authorities. He told me that an inspector from Scotland Yard was already in the area, on official business. I know nothing about the nature of his business, but I was told he should arrive soon. Probably Lestrade, I think it is. What sort of man was your employer? Oh, he was a great man. The people of the hall considered him to be very strict, but I think it was just his way of showing a fatherly attitude. And he dreamed of this day when Miss Lavinia would return. You have a list of guests. Oh, of course. I have a complete guest list for the reception. It's inside the dining room. I believe the police will have need of it. Well, nevertheless, I must first caution them to pay little heed to the notations I've made regarding certain names. Oh, I. You have been very kind, oh. Miss Lambert. Okay. You are most welcome. Oh, what a tragedy. It's terrible. Just terrible. Why were these notations made? Their purpose was to note particular seating arrangements for the meal and the recital, according to specific concerns. Those individuals whom I considered to be very important were marked with a circle. What about the other odd marks? Louis Philippe, uh, I mean Monsieur de la Mazardière, suggested this method of arranging the seating. He also advised me that those guests with poor eyesight and hearing should be seated so that the acoustics and lighting in their room would favour their enjoyment of the recital. So the first category was marked with a point, the second with a cross. What do you know about this Frenchman? He is from a noble family, but found himself forced to seek a vocation as a head waiter. He is so inspired and keenly sensitive to the details. At first, I was afraid that Sir Bronsby would take offence with his suggestions, but he had moderated his opinions regarding French culture due to the influence of his friend, Horace Fowlett. What did he do that was so extraordinary? His assistance was invaluable. He took such concerns with every little detail. The dishes, the tablecloths, everything. He not only declined an offer of lodging here at the hall, he also deferred his wages until the end of the reception. Oh, I would be so glad if he were here now. Mm -hmm. And where has he gone? He had pressing business in London. In fact, he found it necessary to visit his Harley Street physician. It seems his glasses were no longer helping with his eyesight. You have been very kind, Miss Lambert. You are most welcome. Oh, what a tragedy. Uh -huh. I'll speak to this, this little bird here. Are miser. you a relative of the victim? <laughs> no. In truth, I always mocked Sir Bromsby. I am upset because my friend did not arrive as... <laughs> promised. As beautiful as she is cruel, apparently. Do you work here, miss? Yes, my name is Sue. I am a maid for the hall. Where were you when these tragic events took place? I was serving when it happened. I ran straight for the door, just like the others. I swear his daughter must have done it. She's such a strange one. Thank you, miss. We may talk with you again. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> okay, let's go back over here. to these people here. This guy here. Hello. Please excuse me. I'm investigating the murder that has just happened. Oh, yes. Well, that is good. What would you like to know? Yeah. 
Where were you at the moment when Sir Bromsby was killed? I was near the stage, and I saw him falling. Oh, my goodness, it was terrifying. I ran for the door, but despite all my efforts, it was blocked. It's not there. But your costume is torn. Yeah. How did this happen? When I was trying to open the door, the crowd dragged me away. I then fell to the floor. I fortunately suffered no harm, but when I arose, my beautiful costume was ripped and stained. Well, I won't disturb you any more. Yes, no, th fine, th thanks. Excuse me, may I speak with you? Yeah, your servant, sir. Are you one of the domestics employed by the hall? No, I am the personal servant to old Satterthwaite. <laughs> he is there, sitting on that bench. He seems right enough, but he refused a small drink for his elf. Surely he cannot be well. Tell me, what have you seen? I heard the shot, then such a strange noise, and the next thing I know, all those money bags are running in a mad rush with their wives or whatever. Thank you for your help. My pleasure. I'll speak to this junkie. And you, what are you doing here? I'm waiting for Miss Roundtree, the niece of that banker chap. She is inconsolable, all because her admirer of a mere three days acquaintance had already abandoned her. Nothing unusual about that. There is no worse tempered female than this girl. Well, maybe other than my wife. <laughs> <laughs> you heard the shot? I just left to relieve myself there at the end of the garden, you see. <laughs> Seems to me I missed a good race for the doors. Worthy of the Royal Derby. <laughs> well, good. Cheers. Well, my good man, why are you here? I am the manservant of Lieutenant Harrington. I ac accompanied him with the old general of the infantry or whatever. I seem to have drunk too much. Did you hear the shot? What shot? Oh, the shot. <laughs> Great reception, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I have to go. Are you all right? Very good. Bye, madam. I have questioned everyone here. I'll go see if Holmes has finished on his end. Ah. I'm going to click save for a moment while I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go and speak to some people. Uh, oh, there's a dude over there. Oh, who's that? Excuse me, could you answer some questions? You're quite welcome. Where were you at the moment this tragedy occurred? Like all the servants, I was in the ballroom. It was the special orders of the old crab. In my opinion, it was done in particular to have more people there to applaud him. Canny old bird, wasn't he? What sort of man was Sir Bromsby? I mean, as an employer. Troublesome and bad-tempered, but he paid well. Are you personally at the service of the Bromsby family? Yes. There are five of us who serve in the Sheringford Hall. There are Mary and Sue, the maids, Carl, our chef, Lamb, Sir Bromsby's coachman, and myself. All the rest were bought in just for the reception. And where are the rest of the staff? Mary is cleaning downstairs. Sue went to comfort some little goose who had been crying bitterly. It's rather odd because it seemed to me she started crying before Sir Bromsby was shot. And the coachman? Lamb is at the main gate. 
Miss Lambert gave him specific instructions to throw out any reporters and ensure they do not re-enter the hall. However, it would not be good if he finds you've been asking questions here. Tell me, will my name appear in the newspaper? <laughs> Thank you for your help. My pleasure, sir. Oh, he's speaking to him. That shot was dreadful, wasn't it? It's neither the first nor probably the last I shall hear in my life. Tell me, young man, are you a barman or not? Because I'm dying from thirst. Did you have a personal relationship with Sir Bromsby? What impertinence! I will answer questions of this nature only if the issue from my superiors or the authorities. And you, sir, are neither of those. Well, I must leave you now. All right, young man. Mm hmm. Okay. So, we... I'm going to go outside in a minute and figure out where else I can go. Can we go out there? It is not the time to join, Watson. I have not examined everything. Ah. The handle is twisted down. It smells of gunpowder. Ah, that's probably because somebody shot somebody from in here. Just a wild stab in the dark. Handsome armour. Pretty swarf. Let's use my magnifying glass on it. Handsome armour. Oh. Not sure what this is supposed to do. Take measure and a test tube. There is a greasy substance on the door handle. Seems to be a sauce. And what better way to put your hand on it? How the... Oh, okay. Right, let's go down. Oh, what's that? I need something. Small box with white powder. Test tube and a tape measure. Okay. I need my handbag. I love that. A small caliber pistol. A right model. Passport of Lavina Bombs B. Train and ship tickets from Geneva to London. And a gun. Okay, so we have a, okay, we've got all sorts here. Something there. This room was rarely used. Everything else is in order. I don't care. I'm having a dick about. A calling card written in French. Nothing else in there. Uh, so that's my speech. Okay. Okay. Oh, my, my thing is disappeared. My map. A textbook to study French. Oh, can I use my magnifying glass? A textbook to study French. Oh, maybe not. I think that's okay. I have to get rid of that. There we go.
I need something. Okie dokie. I need something. I need something. Why, what is it? Uh, Look, what's this? My test tube has got some white powder in it now. Okay. Uh, very interesting. What a pleasant picture. And this lady is wearing a very nice earring. Let's have a look at that earring, shall we, to make sure we can see it? Oh, yes. It's the future. Is that great? Great actress with all my encouragement, Veronica Davenport. Yeah, not nice earring. Yeah. Uh. Anything in these kind of things, you look around for everything. Why is that shining blue? How do I get out of here? Oh, hang on a sec. Um. I'm trying to find the stair, the, you know the... Oh, my dog's whining at me behind me. How do I get out of here? Oh, there we go. Oh, no, hang on a sec. Oh, go away. Oh, fuck off. Alright, there we go. Oh, come on, how'd you get out of here? You move your. Oh. Let's go back over there a minute. Oh, there we go. You can right click and get rid of that thing. Right. It's probably a good thing not to have it all the time. So I just took my dog. I'm going to go in a bit anyway, so let's just. I need something. I don't know if I can use that for more. Hmm, there is dust. Excellent! Oh, there it is, white powder. Oh, so the test tube is to gather things. White powder and white powder. Right. Like you do. There is a greasy substance on the door handle. Seems to be a source? Excuse me, but would you be Mary? What do you want, mister? Did you hear the shot? Of course, I heard everything. But I didn't stop my work. Imagine that someone else had been killed and not my master. 
Oh, he would have given me a good talking to. What's happened here, on this carpet? An idiot from Hartford's turned over the fowl. So Bronsby Ow. passed by without even taking notice. It did seem his mind was elsewhere these days. Of course, it was probably because of Miss Lavinia's homecoming. What do you think of your employer? He could be the very devil at times, but not the worst. If you had just known my father. And then the master was so generous with our wages. Did you observe anyone pass this way after the shot was fired? No one's come this way, not from the moment I returned after emptying my bucket and the old while I've been cleaning. I only saw Scott, who was in the ballroom. He half opened the door to tell me the news. Thank you, Mary. Not to worry, sir. OK, I think I'll stop there. Uh, let me just save that. Oh. Okay, that's fine. Rita, I'll come back this later. It's actually not a bad game. I kind of enjoy it. I'm kind of curious how it's going to go. Okay.